We live in a very vibrant culture, don't we? We seem to be always in pursuit of happiness. It's even in our Constitution. We tend to shun anything that is contrary to our comfort. We even think of death itself as an obscenity, hidden by cascades of flowers, relegated to some remote cemetery on the edge of town. Even sin is denied, camouflaged, psychoanalyzed, repressed, rarely confessed. Eh, We really don't sin. We just make some mistakes in judgment. Lent is the time to look at and reflect on these temptations, these sins, their consequences. It is a time that reminds us of the human journey of failure and redemption. Like Adam and Eve and Jesus, we all face temptations. Originally, Lent was a season when only those who were about to be baptized repented of their sins and sought to know Jesus more intimately. It was only later that it became the Lent that we know for all the baptized to do the same thing. So we are challenged yearly to die to sin so that we may rise again to a new life with Jesus at his resurrection. Since the church begins the season with a reflection on the origin of sin among us, the main themes in all of today's reading are about temptation, sin, and guilt, and thank God, forgiveness. In our gospel passage today, we hear how Jesus himself was tempted by Satan almost immediately after he got baptized by his cousin John at the River Jordan, at the very beginning of his ministry. In this quite well-known story, Jesus goes through a period of hard 40 days of fasting and very strenuous spiritual exercise alone in the wilderness, in the desert. That's where Satan comes to him. And he tries, not once, but three times to tempt him to stop his work and his mission by offering him the same kind of persuasions and temptations that he had once tempted our ancestors with. Because Satan tempted Adam and Eve with that allure of knowledge and greatness. So that by eating of the tree of knowledge, they would become equal to God. Tempting them with glory and power and knowledge. Moving them to choose to walk with their own rebellious path instead of trusting in the Lord. Except this failed attempt to tempt Jesus, the new Adam, shows us the perfect example of great obedience, obedience to his Father's will, and he refuses to bend to the will of Satan. That is why each and every one of us are reminded today, at the very beginning of this season of Lent, that we must not allow ourselves to be swayed by the lies and promises of Satan and all the other tempters who are sent to convince us to abandon our path and journey towards the Lord. We have to not allow ourselves to be twisted and corrupted 
by our own greatest tempter, our own pride, our ego, arrogance, desires, greed, jealousy, all those things that we encounter as serious obstacles in our journey of faith, right along with our brother Jesus. During this season of Lent, all of us are called to be reminded to deepen our relationship with God through those three pillars of Lent that Father Joe mentioned early this morning. In fact, you all heard it on Wednesday. Those three pillars of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving so that we can stare sin and death right in the face and joyfully recollect, reconnect to the resurrection at Easter. So let us then during this Lenten season very earnestly pray the perfect prayer, our Eucharist. It's in the Eucharist that we find the very words that Jesus himself taught us to pray to our Father, lead us not into temptation. Do not put us to the test. Deliver us from evil. May God be with us always, and may he empower us all throughout this Lenten season so that we may continue to serve him and walk in his presence now and always.